easy and affordable wedding favors and thank you gift ideas. That's coming up next on the Wedding Planning Podcast. Hey there, it's Cara. In over 10 years in the wedding industry, I've learned that it can be a beast to plan a wedding on your own. Here on the Wedding Planning Podcast, every engaged couple can enjoy the expertise of a down-to-earth, honest, and professional wedding planner. Join me each week for straightforward wedding planning advice designed to streamline and simplify your wedding plans. Now you can break down planning your dream wedding into 12 easy steps with my brand new book, Wedding Planning Essentials. To grab a copy, visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash book. You'll find 12 detailed chapters that help you sail through your wedding plans from start to finish. That website again is weddingplanningpodcast.co slash book. Enjoy the show. Welcome to this week's show and thank you as always for joining me here today, whether you're in the car on your commute, you're on the treadmill at the gym, you're grocery shopping, maybe you're prepping dinner, whatever it is that you're doing. Thank you for being here with me and thank you for inviting me to be a part of your wedding plans. That's a humongous honor And I am very, very grateful for the opportunity to walk alongside you for these next few months. Okay, to set up today's show, this is a fun one. We're going to be talking all about creative, affordable, and easy wedding favor ideas. And we're also going to review some thank you gift ideas for your wedding party, your parents, anyone close to you who's helped you during the planning process and you want to express your thanks with a small gift. And then in the second part of the show, I have a ton of your amazing wedding questions. We have some amazing resources to share with you for cheap table linens, candles, something blue ideas, and way too many things to list here. So much more. So I'm excited to get to that. Last week on Instagram stories, I asked, what would you cut from your wedding plans if you suddenly found out that your wedding budget was $1,000 short. Eek. A really popular response was the first thing to go would be guest favors, take-home gifts, table gifts, whatever you want to call them. There are a bunch of different names, but those little party favors would be among the first things to go. Side note, and unrelated to today's conversation, but the other most popular answer was that you would cut extra guests. You would make cuts to your guest list, which is a really, really smart way to trim funds from that bottom line from your wedding budget. So back to wedding favors. I honestly don't blame you for wanting to cut these out. While favors are, of course, totally optional, there are an infinity number of ways to make them really meaningful and fun without spending a ton of money. By all means, if you're thinking in your head, oh, guest a favor is going to run $5 per guest. No, 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 no. Not favors on the wedding planning podcast. Um, If you're adamant that favors are something you want to skip altogether, that's totally fine. But I would encourage you to stick around because the ideas that we're going to review can be done for less than a dollar per guest, if that. You can really make this almost next to free for some of the ideas that we're going to go over. So it doesn't need to be expensive. If you're adamant that you absolutely want to skip it, that's fine. Skip ahead about 10 minutes and we'll catch up over the thank you gift ideas, which we're going to review next. The whole point of a party favor or specifically a wedding favor, maybe a bridal shower favor, the whole point is to leave your guests with a small token of thanks for coming to the event. So we can approach wedding favors or bridal shower favors from a lot of different directions. Some couples aim to give something that will be saved. That's their goal is they want it to be something that will be saved. So a memento like a monogrammed can koozie, 
a custom bottle opener, a wine bottle stopper, maybe a magnet. That's one angle to come at your favors from, and that's totally fine. Those can be done very inexpensively. They can be super cute. My personal downside for a favor of that nature is that I have, I'm going to be very honest here, (laughs) I have dozens of beer koozies and bottle openers in a spot in the garage with our camping stuff because frankly, I don't use beer koozies and you can only have so many bottle openers in the house. With a wedding favor, I don't think you have to spend a lot of time, energy, and definitely not money coming up with the perfect trinket that 100 people are going to love and save forever. So before you commit to spending two or three dollars on a personalized thing like a beer koozie or a bottle opener or any other number of things that you can shop for out there, before you commit to that, just think to yourself, would I want this in my junk drawer in the kitchen? Or would I actually use this regularly? I feel like so many of you have a really good perspective on this in terms of saying, this is just not that important to us. Let's just cut it all together, skip it all together. Nobody needs another can koozie or bottle opener. All right. So with all that said, if you want to do that and go that route, that's totally fine. Like I said, they can be affordable and they are really cute. So if you're hooked on it, I'm not knocking it. Go for it. I am a big fan of a favor or a treat or a take-home gift that is consumable. So by consumable, I mean it can be eaten, drank, burned. (laughs) So I'm going at candies, cookies, candles, tea, coffee, hot chocolate, mini bottles of wine. You get the idea. Something that you take home, it's not going to be lingering around in your drawer for all of eternity. It's not going to end up out in the garage in your camping tub. (laughs) So these are things that your guests take home. It's a token of your appreciation for them coming. It's thoughtful. It's small. It's really affordable. The first favor idea that we're going to review today is let's start with setting up a candy bar for your guests to fill a bag on their way home. With Halloween right around the corner as this episode airs, this feels like a really good place to start. Everybody loves candy, kids, adults, and setting up a really fun assortment of candy on a bar for people to help themselves to is a really, really easy and affordable project. To pull this off, simply choose four to five of your personal favorite candies. I would aim for a mix of chocolate, fruity, maybe even salty, whatever you're into, and then set everything up in containers that your guests can help themselves to after the wedding is over or even during the dancing part. Look in your own kitchen and be creative because I would be willing to bet that you or your close friends and loved ones probably have bowls, jars, containers, etc. that will work for this. You probably do not even need to buy anything to put the candy in. For bags to put everything in, you can pick up 100 clear treat bags at the craft store for less than $3. We're talking really, really, really affordable here. If you want to personalize the bags with a thank you tag or a custom sticker, do a search on Etsy or on Google for templates that can be made at home. And the cost there is going to be, again, very, very little to even free. And then it'll cost you a little bit of time to print them out and put stickers on the bags, for example, really easy and really cheap. And again, a lot of those templates are free. (laughs) They are literally free for you to download. You need to go out and buy sticker sheets maybe, but that's it. I love this idea of a candy bar for your guests because it's something that's interactive. It can be really pretty and fun to look at. It almost becomes a decoration in and of itself. It's interactive. Your guests get up, they talk, they fill their bags, they laugh, they eat, they snack. It's a treat. It's easy. 
And again, I'll say it one more time, this could all be set up for less than $1 per guest easily. If you buy the candy in bulk from a wholesale store, wherever you can find it at a good price, this is a really, really cheap project. Our next wedding favor idea, this one comes from our friends at the wedding blog, Something Turquoise. And I'm going to walk you through it. And I'm also going to leave a detailed link to their blog post where you can go and get detailed step by steps, where to buy the supplies, how much you're going to need, etc. I'm not going to walk through all the details here. So if you want more information, be sure to check the show notes and visit that full length blog post for all the details. So the project is washi tape tea light candles. Okay, washi tape is that really cute tape, decorative tape that you can put on any number of things. It's a little bit hard to describe. Google it if you have no idea what I'm talking about. But basically, we're taking patterned, really cute tape, and we're wrapping it around the base of a tea light candle. And we're going to do that with different patterns, different colors that match your theme. My preferred craft store of choice is Michael's. And I know at Michael's, they have pretty much a half of an aisle dedicated to washi tape. Now, I will say you can get any sort of color. They even have wedding specific ones that are super cute. Um, with little sayings and different patterns, wedding rings, bows, bells, ugh, endless, endless options. And I will say here with washi tape, you're going to be best served buying this in bulk. So if you buy one little spool of it, it might be priced at $2.99 for a foot or two, which very honestly is a ripoff. You would spend a ton of money doing it that way. So instead, I would encourage you to look for the big bulk packages of washi tape. And I bought this recently to use in packaging, like cute packaging of things. And I think it was 10 rolls of washi tape and the whole set was $20 which for my friends who love Michaels as much as I do, you know that you can almost always find a 40% off any regular priced item coupon. So that $20 set of washi tape actually only costs $12 after you use the coupon. So that is the way to buy washi tape. Okay, kind of a long side, side note there, sorry about that, but getting back on track. So you're gonna buy this patterned tape and you're gonna wrap it around the base of tea light candles. The way the blog post on something turquoise has these presented is three of them are stacked on top of one another and then everyone is wrapped up in an organza pouch and tied at the top with really pretty string. They've even gone over the top and added this really cute little wedding ring charm to it. You could add a favor tag to it like we talked about with the candy bags in the last section. Your imagination is the limit here. This would be perfect not only for your wedding favors, also as a bridal shower favor. So if this is something you're interested in, check out that blog post. I'll leave the link in our show notes. I also pinned it to the Wedding Planning Podcast DIY Pinterest board. I'll leave that link as well. Take a peek. It is the cutest idea ever. And then the last favor idea that I'm going to share today is another edible treat minus all the setup that goes into the candy bar that we talked about earlier. So in this variation, you would share a cookie, a donut, a bag of popcorn, homemade chocolate bark, anything you love, and you'll simply package it up in a cellophane bag or in a little box and top it off with a printable sticker or a tag. The website sugarandcharm.com has a really cute donut favor tag download that is totally free. This is just one example that I found out there. There are free downloads everywhere for favor tags and things like that. You do not have to spend money on custom favor tags. Do a Google search for free favor tag template and you should get a ton of options back to choose from. Now with these 
print at home, and I'm using at home in quotes, with these print at home templates, I am a big fan of taking those to an office supply store and having them print them for you. And I say that because their print quality, their paper, their ink quality is going to come back much, much, much better than your at-home printer, chances are, will do. So this is, it doesn't cost a lot of money. We're talking a dollar per page to get it printed on some really nice cardstock. And if that sounds like a lot of steps and just a lot of work, you can also spend a few bucks and have something done by an artist on a website like Etsy. I think you could get custom really cute tags done for a really, really good price if you do your research and look around a little bit. And then as for the treat itself, I mentioned cookies, donuts, homemade chocolate bark. Um, you could certainly purchase these treats so you could certainly buy a few dozens of really fun colorful donuts from your local bakery but of course that's another expense and that's totally optional an idea that I love is to recruit your family and your friends to each make a couple dozen giant cookies or get together and make homemade chocolate bark and then bag it up and that takes all the expense away minus the ingredients to wrap up this favor idea, I'll also refer you to a show that aired on June 19th, and we did a detailed walkthrough of do-it-yourself gourmet hand-dipped pretzel sticks. They turn out really, really pretty, they're super easy to make, and they're really, really affordable. So for a complete walkthrough, we go on a shopping trip, we take everything home, we make it. I have videos to share on the blog post for that episode. So again, that one is dated June 19th. All right, what do you think? Did this get some favor ideas flowing? I would absolutely love to see and share all of your wedding favor ideas that you're working on. Tag me or send me a DM on Instagram. I'm at Wedding Planning Podcast, all one word, super easy. And I'll say to wrap up our conversation on wedding favors, there is so much information out there on this that's totally free for you. I would recommend if you're still feeling like you want to go out and get some more inspiration, I'd highly recommend checking out Pinterest. You can do any type of search, cheap wedding favor ideas, creative wedding favors, do-it-yourself wedding favors, DIY favor ideas. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but Pinterest is a wonderful resource, so definitely use that to your advantage. I hope that's been helpful, and now let's segue into a conversation about thank you gifts for those who have helped you out with the wedding. Now, I'd say it's fairly common that you would give something to your parents, both sets of parents, as a thank you, although not in all cases. So if this doesn't feel like it's necessary for you and your situation, then that's totally fine. We're going to focus on gifts for parents and also gifts for your wedding party. So any bridesmaids, groomsmen, anyone who's been instrumental in helping you keep all your plans running seamlessly, that's what we're focusing on here in this portion of the show. Now, where I think people get a little bit stuck on thank you gifts for your parents is let's say your parents have gifted you a lot of money to help with the wedding. So thousands of dollars. How do you appropriately say thank you for such a humongous gift without in turn spending a ton of money? So a thank you gift for your parents is all about being intentional and giving a gift that really reflects the magnitude of your gratefulness and the importance of your relationship. Hands down, my favorite way to thank your parents for their involvement in the wedding is to have a family canvas print from your wedding day made and given to them. It's not every day that we take professional quality photos with our family, and this is a naturally great opportunity when everyone's going to be together. So to have your photographer get a bunch of shots of you with both sets of the parents separately, you with your mom and dad, your partner with their mom and dad, 
everyone all together, you and your partner and all of your parents, et cetera, et cetera. Do all the combinations and get all the photos of this. These pictures are such a great opportunity for thank you gifts. Now with this gift, of course, you're not going to be able to give this on the night of the rehearsal dinner or right after the wedding. You're going to have to wait a little while to get your professional photos done and back. And that's fine. You can present a card with a written letter and explain what the actual gift is and that it's coming. I wouldn't let that stop you from having this be the main thank you. And back to those photos that you're having your photographer capture, I saw a really, really cute, totally posed photo, obviously looking at it. And the way it's composed is in the middle is the newlywed couple and they're kissing. And then on either side of them, so to the right and then to the left, are both sets of their parents each kissing. So it's this really cute picture of mom and dad on the left, son and daughter in the middle, mom and dad on the right, everyone kissing at the same time. It's really, really cute. Now, that won't necessarily work for all family situations, but if it does work for yours, I thought that was a sweet idea. I also love a framed photo, a canvas photo. There are photos that are done on kind of a metallic print that turn out really cool. I love this idea also as a gift to your wedding party members. So ask your photographer if that's something that interests you. Ask your photographer to get shots of you with each one of your bridesmaids and you with each one of the groomsmen. And then you can give those photos to those individuals as a gift after the wedding. All right, let's move on from the picture idea. Here are some other options. Well, okay, sorry, this is still related to photos, but just a different spin on it. A really well put together photo book that documents your engagement and your wedding day with both professional photos and also candid shots that you've taken along the way. This is another great gift for your parents, especially if they've been really, really involved with you in the planning process. Now, this is the type of gift that doesn't cost a ton of money, but it will involve a big time commitment. But I promise it will definitely pay off in the end. I create photo books all the time after we take special trips at the end of the year of our kids. I am a photo book nut and they can take forever to plan out and create, but it is so worth it. I always, I find myself making them and I get tears in my eyes just looking at every single memory and every single moment and putting those together is so much fun. So I'm in tears making it. And then every time I give it to my sister or my husband or my parents, they are in tears looking at it too. So a photo book, a really well thought out photo book is a sweet way to reflect on all those special moments. And I love this part. It gets the photos off your phone and into print so they can actually be enjoyed. We take so many pictures every single day that just end up living trapped inside our phones. And so this is a really fun way to lay them all out so you can actually enjoy them. And then I want to keep this relatively brief out of respect for your time. So I'm not going to go on and on with a bunch of little physical gift ideas, but there are a ton of cute ideas, broken record alert, on Pinterest and on Etsy. Head over to Pinterest, to Etsy, to Instagram, and do a search for thank you gift ideas for the wedding. Again, I'm not going to go into a ton of specifics. Let's touch quickly on your wedding party members. So giving a small thank you gift is totally appropriate. And I love for this to be something that's actually useful for the wedding day itself. So for example, matching personalized necklaces for your bridesmaids that they can all wear with their bridesmaids dresses on the wedding day. That's a great idea. They can be done really affordably. Etsy is your go-to place for personalized necklaces, personalized jewelry. You'll find a ton of price points and a ton of options to choose from. 
And then for the guys, a custom tie is a great idea. Huge bonus if the tie can be worn again. But you could have these uh, stitched with each guy's name on the back of them. Make it really custom so that it fits in with your wedding colors. That's a great gift idea. And then another fun gift idea for your wedding party members is a thank you gift box. These are really fun because you can personalize it down to the very last detail. Include goodies that you love. And for much more detail on gift boxes, I'll point you to an entire show on bridesmaids. We're talking bridesmaids in the show, but you could extend the ideas to groomsmen. It works for either way. And in that show, we go through a recipe for bridesmaids gift boxes in great detail. In addition to a ton of other information on your bridesmaids, dresses, accessories, etc., That show is dated May 29th, and if you want more information, you want that recipe, and you want the full blog post to go along with those bridesmaids boxes, again, go back, um, scroll back through your shows, and look for the episode dated May 29th of 2019. I'll be back with your wedding planning questions after a quick break. Wedding planning, your engagement, this can all be a really stressful time. And if you're feeling like your happiness is suffering, BetterHelp Online Counseling is there for you. With BetterHelp, you can connect with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient and it's perfect for our busy on-the-go schedules. BetterHelp counselors specialize in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, family conflicts, and more. With BetterHelp, you can get help on your own time and at your own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist. BetterHelp is secure, it's convenient, professional, and best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Wedding Planning Podcast listeners get 10% off your first month with discount code WEDDING. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash wedding. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash wedding. We're going to get into tons of your wedding questions in the second half of today's show, but I simply had to drop these two into our sponsorship space because they fit so perfectly. First question, hey Cara, we have a short engagement of just four months and wondering your thoughts on tuxedo rentals. Researching and going into a store with all the guys sounds really annoying and time consuming, not to mention impossible to schedule with everything that everyone has going on. And with that, I would love to introduce you to our friends at Generation Tux. There are two big problems with suit and tuxedo rental for your wedding day. And this listener mentioned one of them, which is getting everyone on the same page, can be a logistical nightmare. Another problem is that getting motivated to spend your weekend stuck in that formal wear store, crawling with annoying salespeople. Ugh. I can think of literally a million other things I'd rather be doing on a Saturday, and I'm sure your other groomsmen feel the same way. Yet another problem is that you've got to carve out the time to actually pick the suits up the day before the wedding and pray that everything actually fits. With everything else going on, do you really need all that added stress and pressure just hours before the wedding? Well, breathe a sigh of relief because Generation Tux solves all of it. Here's how it works. Visit GenerationTux.com where you can build your look online right from the comfort of your couch. The best part is that everything arrives on the doorstep of all the party members 14 days before the wedding. This way, if there are any fit issues at all, you've got plenty of time to take care of it. You'll enjoy free round-trip shipping, free swatches to see in person, free home try-on, and a free rental for the groom with five paid party members. Save the time, save some money, and most importantly, save your sanity by checking these guys out at www.generationtux.com slash wed planning and use promo code wed planning for 10% off the entire groom's party. 
And next question is about honeymoon plans. Do you recommend an all-inclusive honeymoon? We have our eye on Mexico for affordability and proximity. We're located in Phoenix, so close and quick flight. But it seems like we could probably rent a place and do groceries and restaurants for less than a resort. This is a great question, and it actually reminds me a lot of the show we did just a couple weeks ago on money-saving backfires. My instinctual answer to your question is maybe. You might be able to rent a place and do groceries and eat out a few times for slightly less than it would cost to stay at a really affordable, all-inclusive resort. But I'm going to say that in this situation, staying at an all-inclusive resort for your honeymoon is a no-brainer. Another total no-brainer when planning your honeymoon is reaching out to our friend Susan from Susan's Travel Services. If you're looking for free help with the planning, booking, and ironing out the details of your honeymoon, Susan's Travel Services is the perfect solution for you. Working with Susan to plan your exotic honeymoon, like this listeners to Mexico, is totally free, and it will likely save you a ton of time and money over researching and booking things on your own. Susan and her team specialize in travel around the world, and they'll find you the best deals on all-inclusive resorts in Mexico and the Caribbean, exotic cruises, overwater bungalows in the Maldives, or the African safari that you've always dreamed of. Please save yourself a ton of time and headaches. Do not get overwhelmed with the millions of places and options online. Get some free help and rely on professional experience to make sure you get exactly what you're looking for in your dream honeymoon. Email Susan and tell her that you heard this ad to get $50 off your honeymoon. Tell a friend and get a $50 referral fee if they mention your name at the time of booking. Simply email Susan at susanstravelservices.com for free honeymoon planning services and get $50 off when you book with Susan and her team. And it doesn't stop there. I have so many more of your wonderful questions to share. If you would like to submit questions for future Q&A shows, you can follow on Instagram. You're looking for wedding planning podcast, all one word, super easy. Keep an eye on the stories feature where I will share question prompts. The response to these has been completely, pleasantly, wonderfully overwhelming. I love hearing from you. These questions that we're going to go through right now are actually a continuation of a live Q&A that we did last week. So thank you to everyone who joined in, everyone who submitted your questions. Not only do I love to hear exactly what you're wanting help with, but I know that other listeners get really good inspiration from exchanging ideas and hearing about the situations that you are facing in your wedding plans. So the moral is keep the questions coming and we will keep the Q&As going And last tiny, tiny quick note before we dive in, I'm going to keep these responses really short and sweet so that I can get to as many as possible. First question, what if I want four bridesmaids, but my fiance only wants two groomsmen? Listen to the episode dated January 23rd. It's called Choosing Your Wedding Party, and we go through this in great detail. Short answer, you can have as many people on each side as you want. It definitely does not have to match up. Next up, what's a nice way of saying no children at my wedding? Ooh, we just covered this. Check out the Creating Your Wedding website episode from September 18th. And also go back to just last week, which is dated October 16th, and we covered no kids at the wedding in that show as well. Next question, with an evening wedding, should we have the pictures done before the ceremony? Depending on the time of year, if it's going to be getting dark, that might be a good idea. I would recommend talking with your photographer about the lighting situation and the season of your wedding to make sure that everything's going to be good with lighting. So have that conversation with them and take it from there. 
And then a couple questions surrounding food service. How long should food be served? So cocktail hour, food stations, having a buffet, how long should the food be open, basically? This is a matter of personal taste and personal opinion. At my wedding, we sat down to dinner for two hours, <laughs> which is a really long time, but it was fondue. It was a very social meal, and it was really important for us that everyone had a solid two hours to just relax, have as many drinks as they wanted, enjoy as much food as they wanted, and we were in absolutely no hurry. Have a chat with your caterer, have a chat with your venue and see what their suggestions are. And then based on what feels comfortable to you, you can go from there. And then another food service related question. Do you recommend washable or throwaway dishes for the food stations? We covered this in that live show, but really quickly again, either one is fine. If you're environmentally conscious, there are a ton of biodegradable and really earth-friendly options out there if you do a little bit of research. If you're having a professional catering company orchestrate all this and they're going to be the ones washing dishes anyway, then you could go with plates as well. So either way is totally fine. Completely up to you. Next question, ideas for getting guests dancing and entertained throughout the wedding. Wedding day entertainment is something we've covered in a bunch of past shows, but my number one tip for getting guests up and dancing is to hire a really good, really energetic DJ. And incidentally, we talked about hiring your DJ just last week in that show as well. So interview a few people, get someone who you like their vibe, you like their style, and having a good DJ is going to be number one in getting guests up and excited and dancing and having fun. I always like to keep the entertainment pretty simple. And most cases, nine times out of 10, all people need are their friends and their family, maybe a few drinks, some good food, and people will entertain themselves just having conversations. Next question, any something blue ideas? And this I know is for a bride I was in touch with on the side, but she's getting married as you're listening to this show. She just got married this past weekend. So this one is for anyone else out there who's looking for something blue ideas. Head to guess where? Head to Pinterest and search something blue. You'll get a million really, really cool ideas. Are ceremony brochures necessary? So ceremony brochures, wedding programs, these are also called no, totally optional, not required at all. If you're feeling like this is something you don't want to spend extra money on, then by all means, skip it. And next up, table number ideas that are cute and can be seen from across the room. A really simple, really easy table number idea is to take an engagement picture of the two of you and frame it in a very simple inexpensive frame and then simply put the table numbers superimposed on the picture so you could do this digitally if you're digitally design savvy that's one way or you could literally cut and paste using number stencils and thick cardstock paper that you can find at the craft store. I think eight by 10 is a good size. You don't want it much bigger than that because it's gonna hog up a ton of room on your tabletop, but eight by 10 is good enough so that as guests are walking through the space, they can easily identify and pick out what table is what. Next question, ways making it easy for guests when ceremony and reception are at different venues. This is a great, great question. If you are still shopping for a ceremony space and or a reception space, try to get it all on one site. It makes it so much more convenient. Now, of course, that's not always possible. So if you have to be in two different locations, keep the time between as short as possible without pinching it so tight that people are rushing from the ceremony to the reception, but keep that time down as small as possible. If we're looking at more than two hours between the ceremony and the reception, then it's really thoughtful to suggest places your guests can go, things they can do, a place where maybe they can go sit down and have a drink and a snack. Especially if they're not from the area, they will appreciate having a little suggestion, a couple of places where they can go and kind of enjoy the couple of hours in between 
before they need to be at the reception spot. That you can put in your invitation as an enclosure. That's also a really, really good extra to include on your wedding website for out of town guests to go and get that information. Next question on engagement parties. What cool things do people do at an engagement party? Oh, I would keep it pretty simple. I would have good food, I'd have good drinks, and your closest friends and family, for most, again, it's just like wedding reception entertainment. 99% of the time, that's all people need to have fun. You don't need to be racking your brain for fun games and activities and crazy over-the-top decorations and stuff. Just keep it simple. Keep it focused on some good food, some good drinks. You could even have this at a friend's house. You don't need to spend a ton of money. Really natural, really casual. Those are sometimes the most fun. Okay, and then we have two very closely related questions to wrap it up. First one is best wedding decor or dress resale sites. So I talk a lot on the show about buying and reselling your wedding decor items to another couple. Also an extension of that, buying these things from another couple. So you're not buying it new, you're buying it used from someone else. Some good resale sites to keep your eye on would be good old eBay. I will say Craigslist is a good one, especially for decorations and dresses, because With decorations that are big and heavy, so think big vases or big signs or a ceremony archway, these things would cost more money to ship than likely you would even pay to buy them. So it does not make sense to buy something big and heavy from someone across the country if you're going to have to pay hundreds of dollars to ship it through the mail to get to you. So a more local site like Craigslist is going to be good dresses specifically, if you want to be able to try that dress on, then a local option would be, again, really good for you. And another option aside of Craigslist is Facebook. Facebook has a ton of local groups that host neighborhood garage sales or resales. There's also a website called buynothingproject.com. Dot org, B-U-Y, nothing project, dot org. You can go there and find a chapter in your neighborhood. There are tons of them all over the country. They typically run on a Facebook group. So definitely go there and check it out. The whole premise of buy nothing is that you're simply swapping with your neighbors. There's no money exchanged. It's just people saying, hey, I got to get this out of my house. And the payment is that down the road, they might stumble upon something that they really need and they'll get it for free. So that's a really good resource if you want to check that out. If you are working with a long engagement and you have the time to kind of sit back and be patient and just wait for some really cool things to surface, then that's a great, a great resource for you. And then last question for today, wholesale inexpensive decor like table runner runners and candles. So I shared on Instagram stories last week this amazing website I stumbled across. It is called tablecloths.factory.com. I'll put a link to that in the show notes, tablecloths.factory.com. And what caught my eye were these really, really cute sequin table runners. Some of them were less than $4, which is incredible, a great price. Now, a disclaimer, this was during my searching of the internet, I have never personally ordered anything from that website. I cannot personally vouch for the quality of the items, but from what I saw, the website looked totally legit. They had a contact us option, a chat with us option. So definitely go check them out. They had table linens, chair covers, every kind of decoration you could ever imagine. I will say this question addresses candles specifically. I will say I was not overly impressed with the price on tabletop decoration items like candles and vases, tea lights, things like that. 
but it's definitely worth taking a look if you're interested in buying your own linens or table runners. Now for candles, my favorite place for cheap candles is Ikea. If you have an Ikea anywhere in your area and you're looking for really affordable candles, that is a worthwhile stop. Spend an hour, spend a couple hours and go and stock up. They have scented, unscented, really cute hurricane jars, a ton of options. So definitely go take a look at those. And with that, let's wrap it up. Thank you so very much for being here with me today. I hope you found something inspirational in our conversation all about wedding favors. Thank you gift ideas and maybe a helpful nugget or two in the Q&A section. If you are loving the Wedding Planning Podcast, can I ask the smallest favor from you? I would really, really appreciate it if you can share with your family and friends, if you could share our website link in any chat rooms that you're participating in, whether that be on Facebook or on other wedding blogs. If you're ever having a conversation with someone and you feel like an episode would be helpful for them to hear and you could share that information with them, it would mean the absolute world to me. It's my goal in wedding planning podcast life to reach as many couples as possible and to help as many couples as I can understand that wedding planning should be fun, it should be carefree, it should be full of down-to-earth friendly advice, it should not be overwhelming, it should not be constantly stressing you out. And it definitely should not make you feel bad or less than or bummed out because of all the extravagant craziness that you see out there on social media, on blogs, on wedding websites, etc. So if you could share the podcast with friends, family, in chat rooms, our website is weddingplanningpodcast.co. You can tag me in your wedding posts on Facebook and Instagram at Wedding Planning Podcast, all one word super easy. If I could have you help me spread the word, I will be eternally grateful. Thank you so much for your support of the podcast. Thank you for joining me here today. And we'll talk again next week, same time, same place. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the Wedding Planning Podcast. For details on any links and resources mentioned in today's show, be sure to take a peek at the show notes on your mobile device. You can also head over to weddingplanningpodcast.co for a complete library of past episodes and to sign up for weekly show notes and resources delivered straight to you via email. Until next time, have a great day, happy planning, and I can't wait to chat again soon. Cheers. Cheers.